Well, hi, once again, ladies and gentlemen. It's our pleasure on behalf of Accustats Video Productions to welcome you once again to the 2017 Accustats Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational. Yeah! Thank you. And the Make It Happen series, as always, originates right here in the Aramis Simonis Arena at Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey, the home of Accustats and the home of the Make It Happen series and the home of six of the best players in the world that we've brought here once again to compete in the Make It Happen Round Robin format. We're playing eight ball for the first four days of this two for one. And at the uh, conclusion of the round robin play, the players with the two best overall records will compete in one final match for the championship and for another thousand dollars. The winner of every match throughout the Make It Happen series receives one thousand dollars. It's really an honor to be able to showcase eight ball and straight pool here over the next week. Uh, it's the uh, most traditional games in our long, uh, illustrious history of our sport, and it's great to have these terrific players showcasing their skills for us. We have the best equipment in the business. We've got a Diamond Pro-Am table. It's covered with Tour Blue Simonis 860, and we're using Aramith balls. It doesn't get any better that, than that and we want to express our gratitude once again to those companies for their ongoing support of Accustats Make It Happen and of Professional Pool. And we want to thank all of you as many times as we can, and we're going to keep doing it until you tell us to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for your support and loyalty throughout all the years, not only the Make It Happen series, but all of the Accustats productions uh, throughout the world for the last uh, 30 plus years. Once again, we've relied on you. You come through for us. Thanks again for making it happen, everybody. Thank you. Okay, uh, this will be the uh, second of the afternoon session matches. It's now my pleasure to introduce our two competitors. He's played once. He was victorious. He's from Trinity, Florida. Nine times he's represented the USA on the uh, Moscone Cup team and he is a former U.S. Open nine ball champion. He holds a distinction in U.S. Open nine ball history. He's the only man ever to win the finals via shutout. He did that in 2001. Sponsored by Meucci and sponsored by the School of Pool, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Prince of Pool. It's Corey Duell. His opponent from Glasgow, Scotland, he is a former, and I guess we can say he is the defending Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational Champion, having won that just a few uh, Make It Happen events ago. And I don't think there's anybody in the pool world that doesn't now know that this man is the now newly crowned and reigning U.S. Open 9-Ball Champion. He's sponsored by Mayuji. He's sponsored by DigiQ, by OB. We call him Eagle Eye. Please welcome U.S. Open Champion Jason Shaw. All right, here we go. Race to 10. And at this time, your official timekeeper once again is Julie Ha. And I'm going to send it to the booth to our host, Double J, Jeremy Jones, and to our own Hall of Famer, Danny DiLiberto. Go ahead, Jay. Thanks again, Kenny, and welcome again, everyone, to the 2017 Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational. I'm Jeremy Jones with Accustat Video Productions, joined by Hall of Famer Danny DiLiberto. We're here in Edison, New Jersey, and ready for this second match of day two. Uh, what do you think, Danny? What are your predictions well, here? I think that uh, Corey Duell played the best session of eight ball yet, and I don't know if he could slow Shaw down enough to beat him, but he's capable. Yeah, and uh, interesting enough, we're going to see another, probably a guy that the, the two players that are going to be breaking the balls differently than the rest are Corey and Darren. Um, and I think we both kind of think they play the game, uh, probably the most pure eight ball game between the six players, uh, uh, those two. So yesterday we had Corey breaking the second ball, uh, which is legal. Uh, we don't have any rules on the break as far as uh, what ball you can hit or where you have to break from. The eight does count on the break and we're racing to 10 alternate the break with a 45 second shot clock. Well, that's why Corey prefers the side break because he thinks he's got a better chance making the eight in the break, and he's right. Yeah, and uh, I think... He gets movement with the eight. Yeah, and I think uh, 
honestly, that pop center break isn't isn't one of Corey's best. So, uh, like most of the guys, are using basically a 10-ball break for this 8-ball format. Uh, breaking from the center, trying to play the two balls behind the one in the sides. And that's very successful there. He got a kiss back to the end rail a little bit. And he's made a stripe. He's going to have to play what looks like a combination uh, to start. And he's going to have to shoot it with a little speed because he can't just roll it in with the two being there. The 15 won't produce a shot. And he's got to get the cue ball back out for shape on something else. So whether that be a long distance shot on the 10, if he can get this one down and get a shot, not have that 15 tie up, though, I like his chances of running out. Okay, I'd like to knock this 15 off on the side, man. I'll tell you what, that was executed perfectly, right, Danny? Yes, yes, it did. And, and uh, it's like we say, whenever you're playing a combination, play position for an insurance ball. Don't rely on the balls you're hitting. That's what he did. He had the 10 if he had to, but he's got the 15. Now, one thing I really like starting off here for Jason, uh, looking at him practice, he looks a lot better today than he did yesterday. Yesterday he looked a little sluggish, if you ask me, if you ask my opinion on that. He's going to try and drop for the 11 here, I'm, I'm sure. But just that opening shot on that combination, he really hit it with, a, you know, w with a lot of confidence, uh, with a great strike on the cue ball. He's gotten a little bit out of line here as far as the angle isn't great. And you'll notice the nine doesn't pass the eight. So he's going to have to play the either short side position on the nine, probably shooting it up in the corner. Okay, he's going to, he wants that ball to go though. He doesn't need the bad angle on the nine, uh, excuse me, on the 12 getting to the nine. He got a good angle. He's trying to see, hey, can I run right into this five fully and be just fine? Uh, or maybe he's just holding above the five for the steeper cut on the nine. And I think we can all say one of one of Jason's uh, strengths is recovery and being able to make balls from a lot of different places. He's got a great stroke, very pure. I think he's the best shot maker in the game. Yeah, well, I'll tell you one thing I like is it doesn't seem like he ever over hits the ball. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> you got him. Well, and if he's got to look at the seven ball. Well, he's got the three. It's and he's a got mile the three, away. and he's got the four as well. So the three's a little straight, and he's on the rail. The one thing about the seven is what he what is he going to shoot next? He can shoot through the seven and get get a long shot on the three or the four. He'll probably just roll the three in, having the two right next to the pocket. Doesn't have to cheat it and let the cue ball get up table or anything. So. But you'll notice it's not like a total hanger here with the eight hanging. Uh, that's really cutting off the six and the seven once the five gets taken away. So he's going to have to play very tidy position on that five, six, and seven. Well, he's got to get straight in on the five. Right. That'll get him to the six and seven. I think he Maybe. just probably comes across, plays the four, and then uses the one to, to shoot in the side and then come across, I think, anyways. I mean, these guys can see a little something different than we can because they can see every angle exactly how it, it, it actually is. But I think he'll use the one to drop down on this five, six, and seven. And, and he doesn't necessarily have to get on the five. He could get on the seven as well and then play from underneath the balls. Well, that'll get him straight in on the five. Yeah, and he doesn't want to be short of it. That's the main thing. If he goes a little long on the five, he's got the seven, and that's okay. But doesn't want to be short on this five to where the cue ball's going into the six and seven. Like so. This is what he didn't want, yeah, in he's my gonna, opinion. He's going to hit the six. Well, he probably plays safe from here, right? I mean, I, I, I don't see anything wrong with the safety from here. 
Otherwise, he's got to be real careful. He could knock the six up in position where it doesn't go by the nine up long and it doesn't go by the eight. So I think he'll have oh. the seven in the same pocket he just shot, and I was right. Yeah, and he really he he really threw the ball in and caught the five heavy enough to not not move the six in a bad position. Well, he's going to have to juice this a lot of left once it gets straight in on the six. Then he'll be out. Good enough. And he's going to have yeah. a little cut on the eight. And both playing nine ball and eight ball and. Just all games, uh, running balls, playing one pocket. I've always considered Corey as one of the best position players in the game. Really a great foundation for how you're supposed to get through the rack. And he's been proving it so far in this tournament. And Corey, I, I think, really is has been one of the geniuses in the game and we can we can go back to what he what he figured out about the rack that no one else figured out about the rack of you know 150 years of pool that he figured out in a short period of time and kind of changed the game there for a little while well, wouldn't you agree danny yeah and it changed the rules of, of the break right he caused the break to come with that three balls stuff you know right because he was breaking too soft. He was making balls on the break, and they stopped him. I thought that was wrong. As long as he's making balls on the break, how could you tell him he's not hitting them hard enough? Well, I think there's a fine line there. You know, yesterday you had commented about players that play slow. You have to have entertainment involved as well. And I think with the soft break, it kind of took away from the entertainment. You saw a lot of the same runouts. You saw yeah, a lot of right. uh, short position shots. Um, one thing that fans want to see from the great players are the greatest shots, and uh, the soft break kind of took that away, you know, so. Well, I rate this like boxing, the boxer versus the puncher, and I think we call Shaw the puncher and Corey the boxer. Right. A little more Mayweather you might consider, you might consider Corey very much a technician at all times. And this is where if he's successful on this side rail break, uh, the second ball, excuse me, uh, much different than last match. Darren was breaking from the side, hitting the head ball first, which I thought was not going to be the way to go eventually. Uh, and I think he'll realize that, that he's got to go back to the center. But that second ball break is a little different. You make balls a little more often. You get some clusters now, but. I'll tell you what he's done though, he's made one of each and that's gonna that's gonna bode well for him. He's looking at this seven six combination. And I don't blame him, but it's awfully tight, I'll tell you that. He doesn't have to do anything but probably touch any part of the six to make the seven, but it's still tight. But if he could do this, he took the right group, I think. Yeah, and he's opened up everything also, uh Oh, great, great shot. Great shot. Yeah. Great shot. Now, the seven, what has it done for him? Does it go in the side? It does, but uh, you really have to get nice on it. Yeah, he's looking at Did it. Did he get a shot on anything? But, oh, he's got the four. Excuse me. He's got the paint four down here by the lower right. He's still got a gain position on the three as well, which I think that's okay. I might play. If the seven goes easy in the side, I like the four the one, the seven, bouncing off the rail to getting straight in on the five and then fall down on the three ball for your last now. If the seven's not so easy, he may try and get on the three now. Or the seven now. Yeah, well, he's hitting it with a tight high inside. Oh, he's lucky he didn't hit it. Yeah, and he didn't want to get elevated. So he might peel off the five first since he's a little elevated on this six. And he's got a sideboard on the five. Yeah, and... and, and and from from the way he's going through the rag now, it makes me feel like the seven in the side is very doable. I still kind of thought he could he could just play for the one next and kind of connect the dots with the one seven five three last and and then having the eight, but. And players here. If they have an extension left in the bag, they don't have to announce it. It's just automatic. 
Okay, and now, like again, he, he, the seven must be very available on the side, or else you would see him have played something a little different. He'll just come either probably one rail towards the one. Could use two rails with a high inside ball, but I don't think that's necessary. Just a little bit of inside to come one rail towards the one. Oh, he's, is he drawing this ball around the eight? Um, yeah, I think he is. Well, this makes me think now that the one isn't, a, the seven isn't available on the side. Like he has to maybe do something. Uh, I don't see why the corner was, what was wrong with playing for the one in the corner. Yeah, he's looking at it extra. I think it goes. Yeah, and he went ahead and got on it now. And I guess he just didn't like playing it last before the eight. He didn't want to shoot the eight with a little cut. So... I'm guessing that's what made him go ahead and play position on the seven now. Good shot right there. Yeah, he hit that well. And one thing about Corey, it seems to me, and just like his, I played him so many times through the years, that even when he's in stroke, he starts off a little like uh, tight uh, to start the match. And I don't mean like dogging it or anything, but just very concerned with what's going on. And uh, as the match gets going, uh, he plays even better and better. So if he can avoid any early mistakes, I think you're going to see Corey just just play really well throughout the entire match. Yeah, the whole tournament probably. And later in the week, we will get to the straight pool. We're here on day two, uh, the second match of day two. We had a, a win earlier by Filler over Appleton with a, a Filler playing a pretty solid match. A few unlucky scratches on the break. Uh, Darren could tell you he, he could have played a little better, but nevertheless, another impressive win by the young man, uh, Joshua Filler. Well, we talked about it, and I think Darren was a little stubborn on the break. He right. didn't go to the center soon enough. Yeah, now Jason, uh, I commented a minute ago that I really feel like he looks a lot better today than he did yesterday. He looked a little sluggish yesterday, um, but he's up against it as well. We know mathematically you're not eliminated if you lose your first two uh, as far as from getting to the finals. And and no matter when these players do get eliminated from the final, they're still going to be playing their heart out each match, that's for sure. They have a lot of interest each match uh, financially. But what I was getting at is he... He really knows he needs a win here to be to stay a real contender in this uh, to try and make the playoff in the final. And Good shot. Yeah, and he's really doesn't have many issues other than making sure he plays nice position on the two to get to the four. He's going to look at that right now and. He could follow this ball two rails around the four, although... That's probably better. Yeah, but that's I a little more dangerous. Make sure you don't catch a piece of the four. Now, he overcut the ball to a certain part of the pocket where he stayed away from that second rail rubbing the four. That was the safer way to go. He's going to shoot. have to shoot this from a hair of long distance, that meaning the three next. But really, his strong suit, and you'll... You'll notice, uh, you know, if you watch some of the U.S. Open, he really made sure he kept the run going, even if he had to shoot a ball from a long distance at, at times. And that shows you a lot of confidence, Danny. Oh, he definitely doesn't lack confidence. From the first time he came to this country, he beat everybody around New York. Yeah, he owned Turning Stone uh, tournament for a few I years, know. that's for sure. Yeah, I went to that every year. Yeah, well, that's not far from where you're at, so. Yeah. And now after three games, dual leading two to one. And that's just from an early miss on the nine ball by Jason after making a nice out. This will be interesting because we got two contrasting styles. Well, that's for sure. Corey, when he plays the game, he doesn't 
he doesn't fish too far from the shore. He really plays a tidy game, and he's just, he's, he's, you, know, you know what I mean? He's just, fish too far from the shore? Yeah. He, Is he, that like chunk? No, no, that's not. That's, that's, kidding, that's way I'm away kidding. from chunk, but, yeah, yeah, I think you understand what I'm saying, though. He, play, he plays it pretty tight overall. Yeah. He's very aware of his position play where he's not wanting to settle for the long shot unless he absolutely has to. Now, this cue ball's diving below the rack. I'm not in love with that. I, th I think he could get an untimely scratch that way. Um, but if he's making three and four, I, I'm not sure it's going to matter. He's, this is ideal. Again, he's made two of each. Okay, and he doesn't have a good shot on the stripe, so he may have to end up banking this three across the side, Danny. That's it. That's the a only problem later in the with rack. the solids. Yeah. But it's simple. Uh, bank if you fall on it properly. That's the whole secret. Yeah, he's got a couple of ways he can go. He's definitely going to shoot the one first. That's looking him straight in the face now. He's going to have to get on that five ball as well. The six isn't as much a problem as it looks. Really, with just this opening shot to get the run started is probably going to tell the tale this this rack. Up, oh, up. Oh, I saw it just going right. It was right down the barrel. He just caught a little bit of the point. Yeah, you can't miss against Shaw. No, and he just as good as he is on the bank right now. Do you bank it right now, Danny? I think you do. I think you do. I mean, because just because I like the solids better than the stripes still. And you're going to have to probably yeah. bank it anyways. I know you may give up position if you miss, but you're probably going to lose anyways. So. Now he can he can just come off the rail. Just a touch, play the five up long for a nice. Now he's going to come out, move the cue ball, and that's okay. I thought he could just dink that in, play the five up, then have a nice angle to shoot the two and come around them balls for the six in the same hole. But the six goes, so. Yeah, it passes. Yeah, so he can he come can across go to now. It right now. Yeah. He could nudge the 14. It's not going to hurt him getting to the two. Don't let up on your stroke here, though. You want to catch a lot of that 14. You don't want to glance. Like that. Yeah. Okay, interesting. He came back for the side. I would have probably just pinched it back three or four inches for the corner. Right. But I find guys a lot these days play the balls a little more on the sides than I was taught. And now after four games, two games apiece, and really, really a bad miss after a, a pretty great break overall yeah. by Corey. It was a shocker. Can we see Corey's miss again? We're going to get a look at this and just how tough these diamonds are. You'll notice he just catches the upper point just ever so slightly. Yeah, and it doesn't take much. The shelves on these diamond proams are deep. So anytime you got a deep shelf, that uh, the pocket size, it matters, but it makes the pocket even tighter. So. Corey breaking that second ball. Um, again, I think if Corey was a little better at the break in the center, the pop break in the center, I think watching his opponent just pour him in. Now, he may not make one because I always jinx him. But... And, and that's exactly what happened. Did it again. <laughs> oh, the three ball, the three ball, the three Still ball. Rolling. No, no good. Yeah. That used to annoy me when I played. The last ball rolling went in for my opponent. I hated it. And really, no, you'll see nothing touching, nothing really buried. Yeah, he's out. Yeah, he should be out here. and He just needs to get that one ball up there. And the, the stripes are nice, too. I mean, there's there's anything you might look at as a problem, like the 14, is he's got to, he can shoot that right now if he wants. The 10, the 15 is easy to get to the 10 with the 15 being there. He's going to knock this two ball away, though, and I do like the solids better than the stripes. 
The six goes by the 15 with no problems. I'd be trying to get at that one uh, just as quick as I could, Danny. What do you think? I think so, but don't forget, he's got a ball hanging in the side that will help him. So I don't think it's a problem shooting the, the one right now even. Right. But still, go ahead and get it is what I mean. Just, just, right. just as quick as you there. can. No, yeah. I, I wouldn't have shot this. I'd shoot the one before I shot this. Okay, he doesn't want to be stretched using the bridge in this situation. He's right-handed, so he should be able to reach it. Should be able to reach over the table and don't think he can reach it from the back rail. Yeah, he's got to go to the side rail and thankfully he's right-handed. Now the seven doesn't pass the four, so he needs to go ahead and get on the six right now. And he's overhit that a little bit. Oh, he's still okay. Yeah, okay. he's got a pretty easy shot. Yeah, and you'll, I think, he, he can do it a number of ways. He's got enough gap between the 9 and 11. I think I kind of like shooting the 6, 7, 4, 5, and then 8 in the side maybe. He can play the 6 and then the 5 if he wants. Well, the thing about it, when they're open like this, there's many different ways you could go. Yeah, and just an inch of the cue ball here or there will make you make that decision. But I think he's fine here. Yeah, 7, oh, 4, great. 5. He's great. And it looks like he can get dead full on the four and just stop right there in between the nine and 11 for position on the five. He wants to get straight in on the five. Oh, that and almost he, came too much, huh? Yeah, he's okay. He's going to play the eight on the other side. But. Just... He can come up one rail with a little outside, or he can put inside and come up, come two rails wrap in the corner softly. He's just going to come up one, which I, I agree with. Perfect. Very clean out. We expected him to run out with all the balls open, but still, nevertheless, really made it look easy. Well, he missed the one earlier, so you can't say he's out. And the people out there that are duffers don't want to hear it. <laughs> it looks too easy. Well, like all sports, the best players in the world make it look easy. I'm impressed every time I watch football and I see them guys just flick at 50 yards and 60 yards like it is nothing. Yeah. Now, Corey, he's going to stay with that second ball break until it really fills him and that may be a, a four or five consecutive breaks to where he doesn't make one or the or the layouts aren't good or maybe even a loss of a match the one thing that i i consider a little danger is that cue ball going one rail below the rack opening up this lower right hand corner pocket if you're looking at your monitor okay Oh, Again, here comes he, the 15. Yeah, he's made three, I think, two stripes, and he's straight in on the 12. And then, so, <laughs> again, could it be any better, Danny? No, I would have to bet he's out. Man, he's really, uh, I mean, he's got. No problems at yeah, all. Yeah, he'll shoot the 12, 10, 11 in the side. I think 12 and the 10, just roll forward for the 11 in the side, roll forward for the 9 in the corner, using the 13 last to get on the 8. No reason to overthink this. I think just roll it in and play the 11 in the side. He could peel the 11 off now, but I don't think that's really the shot. Don't have to. Yeah, I don't think that's the shot. I think it, take care of that 10, just bounce off the rail. Maybe a foot and a half or a little less than a foot. He's queuing down. Wow, he's coming back for the 11 in the corner. Okay. And he's gotten a little thinner, but he's still okay. Yeah, the 13 will get him to the 8. 15, 9, 13, 8. That's the 11. 
Yeah, the 11 and then the 9, 13, 8, as Danny, Danny talked about. Only thing bad that could happen here is a miss. A miss at the cue ball and then a miss on the 9 of some sort. Not likely to miss. No, and trying to extend to a two-game lead and breaking, so. Oh, no, excuse me, Jason will be breaking. Jason broke dry on the last one, and Corey's breaking and running out, so. Yeah, he's making it look real easy, so you know he's playing very well. so successful on the break so far. He can't afford to lose this game and then let Corey break to try and get a four-game lead. All right, he made the 14, and he's made two stripes. He's going to have to come away with a shot. He's got a thin cut on the 12 in the side if it goes by the four. I think it does, but you're going to lose the cue ball a little. Yeah, well, I don't think he has a look at anything else, does he? Nope. he? He may not have an entire pocket on the 12 either, but... Okay, great shot there. Now he's got to have a little concern with the 11. He's got to get on that 11 in the side. Or in the corner, yeah, he's got the 10 to get on the 11 by the 8. No problem at all. Yeah, Jason's going to make quick work. Oh, well, he's got he's gotten a little thin here. He'll run into the 1. That'll yeah. hold him. Perfect angle. Play the eight in the corner and quick work here in, in game number seven. Uh, Danny, I'd like to ask your opinion on something. What do you think about the uh, long cues these days? The uh, Pal, I'm glad you're talking about it. I don't like to, but we had maximum lengths and weights in the rule book years ago, and no longer do we have that. I don't like the extensions. I don't like any of that. I don't like the break cue. Well, the break cue, I don't mind so much, but I'm, I don't I'm, like it. I'm a firm believer in what you said as far as I don't like the other changes that even whenever I started playing, uh, we had rules on lengths, diameter to shafts, the weights, because right. there is a distinct advantage there. It's just like golf clubs. They have well, regulations on golf clubs, tennis rackets, all that stuff. So. It takes away from the science of the game. You know, sometimes playing pool, a lot of times, you got to take a longer shot to have better position. And, you know, that doesn't enter anymore when you could just come with a long cue. Right. Well, the extensions uh, were, were the in initial one just for a shot time, uh, you know, a shot from here to there. Now guys play with the longer cues, but I totally agree with you, and we won't harp on it too much, but I, I, I think, and I'm not very good with the bridge, but I think you still should, if you don't play good position, you should have to use the bridge. And now Corey having an opening on the solids and, and really a tough rack. He's got to open the five to start with. One good thing is if he can do that, he can probably shoot the one and maybe uh, uh, he'll have the one next and maybe shoot the three and be able to open that seven. So he knows he's got the break shots there. That's why you didn't see him take much time trying to figure the rack out. 
There's really not much to figure. Well, he made a nice shot on that six to open that five up. That's going to that's gonna play huge for him whenever he shoots this three trying to open the seven. He'll have an insurance ball there. That's going to be makeable from a lot of places, too, because it goes off the nine just in case he gets a little steep. Well, the one is going to get him the angle on the three to go into the seven, and then the five is the insurance ball when you do. Right, and even if he gets behind something, the kick on the five is the rail first is so makeable because the nine's there. So. The thing about this is you don't have to shoot hard. Well, I don't even think he has to move the seven. If he hits the top of the 14, I think they'll both open up to where the seven will go in the lower right. I'm You're not 100% right. about that, but I think. I think he's got good action. Well, it takes away any gamble at all. Right. So you know, he don't have to hit this hard. Just get the seven out in the open. Yeah, just medium, right? Like a medium. Right. Oh, oh, he, he didn't. didn't. He didn't catch enough the top side of that ball, and that's that's not going to be what he wants. He's got a problem now. Well, I think you'll see him play this off the off the nine, trying to hold position on the two. But then, what about the seven? So. Yeah, it's going to be tricky now. He's looking at drawing into the five right here. There is a short side on the seven to where it goes, I think. Can he hit it? And, and still, can he hit the little bit the left side of the five and still make the nine to where he can fall on the left side of the two, shooting the left the two up in the left corner? I don't know about that one. Well, you see, what I'm saying to where he may be able to draw the cue ball back on the seven some kind of way. He's going forward and trying to play the two in the side. Yeah. He's trying to get underneath it too. What a great shot, actually. Now he may have a natural angle to go into them balls. Oh, that was a great shot. If he completes the run out, it was. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't think he even has to go into the seven. He may be able to go into just the left side of that 15, opening the seven for the corner or the side. Well, he's looking at the seven going right by the ball. I don't know if it does, but he thinks it might. Because he I, was looking at it a little while ago. I think I got to take my chances going into him, I think. I don't know. Well, not if it passes. He's Apparently at the, it passes. Yeah, he's, no, he's playing it off the 15. He's going to oh, have to hit this with top kissing. English, right? He's going to have to hit this with top to hold it up. If he you got to make a good hit is what you got to do, but I don't know. It, it looks like it's over kissing if you try to play it off the 15. I think if you hit low, you're hitting the bottom rail with the 7. Oh, no, he hit it great. He what a shot. A wicket. What a shot. People like that. Yeah, and I'll tell you, give him some credit because he, he said, well, I could go into these balls and maybe get a shot, maybe not, but at least I know I got a chance to make this shooting it this way. This is similar to that one ball he missed just a few he racks ago. Right. Oh, and he caught a little bit of that rubber going in again, so. Good match. Race six now. Yeah, and you're looking at, you know, a match and almost a match a, a match and a half of Corey Duell really not making any mistakes. I don't really recall that we talked about a slow roll bank on the two he missed yesterday, but it was a real tough, tough shot, just kind of like a, you know, a, the last hope shot on a rack that he lost. But other than that, in two days' play, he's played pretty much perfect. Yeah, that is correct. It's not 4-4. Four, four. Excuse us on that. Well, we got it right now. And if you're Jason, the mentality you have is keep doing what I'm doing with. Okay, we're going to get another look at that kiss shot on the seven. 
And I'll tell you what, that slow speed, he really made it with that slow speed, speed uh, deflect a lot more off the 15 than I thought he could. Danny, you probably thought that was going to hit the low I rail as well, huh? any harder, it would have overkissed. Yeah, just a great shot, though, nevertheless. Can he get well, at this he's three? he's very creative. He's going to have to spin it, I think. Well, he's concerned of the four, so he wants the angle to shoot and get into that four or 11. See how he spun it? Yeah. He needs wow, to get on that. this is nothing. <laughs> this is a long shot. Yeah, he needs it to get. didn't roll off. He needs to get on that seven quick so he can come two rails into the back of the 11. That's what he needs to do. He needs to have the seven, uh, the, the one there for maybe getting shape as well, like so. Oh, that was a great shot. Yeah. Still not out of the woods, though. He's got to get this in, pinch the cue ball back, and then still have a path to get across for the shape on the eight after shooting the one in, so. He'll be shooting the eight. Going right in between the 14-9, right, with the cue yeah. ball? Yeah, play the eight up the corner near where he's standing. Good good control there. And fell a little bit behind it, but really his bread and butter are shots like these. Well, this has got a big pocket because you could brush the rail and make these kinds. Yeah, of he's not going to slam it, so he's going to open the pocket up a little bit. And again, quick work by Jason Shaw. But I was getting at is Jason's thinking that that second ball break come near the end of the match is going to fail Corey somewhere along the line. Let me just keep doing what I'm doing and, and hopefully get the opportunity to, to steal this match away. And really, both players are having one miss a piece. Uh, Corey with a one ball. And, and what you would consider an easy one ball after the break he missed. And then uh, Jason with a thin nine ball on the side earlier uh, that wasn't super easy, having to bump the eight for shape uh, on the eight. He missed it. He overcut it a little bit. Other than that, we've seen some exceptional pull. Really getting nice contact through the rack with the cue ball as well. He's made, uh, has he made three of each? No, two of each again? Excuse me. Yeah, two of each again. How ideal is this? That's twice and this. And they're open. Yeah, that's twice this, uh, this match. He's made two of each. I mean, three of each is the only way it gets any better than that, right? Yeah, but I don't like it. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Now, is he bumping this immediately? He's got to be bumping this three. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Corey really looking comfortable. Got to watch out for this 14 ball now. We are playing all ball fouls. Okay, and depending on this angle, uh, will make the difference on if he just punches out for the six now and then the one, or if yeah, he just... Yeah, he's going to... The angle he's got, he'll be straight in on the six, and okay. the one is right there. Yeah, he's got enough angle Perfect. to get over. Yeah. Perfect. And just the stop shot here will maybe pinch him back an inch or so. That'll make it easy to get from the one to the eight in the side. Draw back a little bit. Or you can go forward, actually. Yeah, I'll just cheat it a little bit and bring the cue ball out for a little bit of a cut on the eight in the side. And now to extend, no his, yeah, extend his lead back to two games. I'll tell you what, I think the way Corey's breaking them right here, that'll make players think about uh, that second ball break, won't, won't it, Danny? It sure will. Of course, when it comes to breaks other than, you know, the traditional ones, I think Corey, Corey's the master, you might call him. Both these.
these players have really settled in. I don't anticipate any open misses now. You may see a miss later in the match uh, just because of uh, get trapping themselves on position. But as far as an open miss, something that's really something they're supposed to make, I just don't think you're going to see any more of those. Now you got a kiss on that ball to keep that ball from going in and nothing. Wow. A lot of close ones, but that doesn't help. Now you're not allowed to play a, a stripe into the solid, the rules we're playing. You can play a solid into the stripe into the solid, like the 3 10 1 here, if he, if he elected. If he does that, though, he, and he may do that, he's going to want to hit it with some speed. That way the 10 gets out of there, correct, Danny? Right. Right. You can't have the 10 stay there if you shoot the solid. Is he playing a beard? Or does he not not the. What's he, he can doing? hit the one, I think. Oh, okay. Well, that makes a huge difference then. Yeah, I didn't understand the beard. Well, he's not, he's got the five. That's all he's got. He's a mile away. Yeah, I know. But still, though, he's still got to be concerned about the six. I thought I thought he could get at the one maybe and then play the six. Uh, this is a little problem right here. Yeah, don't don't let off this. You're going to hit it with some speed to get up the table for the two. Well, he got there. Yeah. He's over the top, but he got there. Yeah, he's kind of, though, I'm trying to figure out what what guaranteed way he's going to get on this six ball. Now, he's got three of them to work with down there, but if he's long distance on this first one, that could pose problems. He's got the three. And he's but got it's a, gonna be a problem with the six. Yeah. But maybe with the four you can get on the six. Well he's gotta make a clear cut decision which way he wants to go here. Uh whether that be coming one row up and getting on the seven and trying to come across on the four and then falling on the six. Like so. Oh that that almost that didn't help. Well, he can get on the six now. Yeah, and he's close enough to it to where he can really pinpoint the line coming across the table, making sure he doesn't run into the four. Doesn't want to run into the four, doesn't want to apply too much inside and run into the six. Outside chance of getting behind the ten, that's unlikely. Aim at the ten here when you play position. That'll do it. Well, he's still got to have concern, though, because he's got to get on the six, and still you'll notice the four doesn't have – it has a pocket where the seven's at, but you got to make sure you get to where you can get on that. So he may play for the four now, believe it or not. He may apply a lot of left and just come two rails and get, try and get real heavy on that four, like so. And I think he got perfect. He, he did. He's got the angle now to go at the ten. And he's got to draw this ball to an angle, meaning don't let up on your stroke and let it fall on you to straight in. Make That's great photography. Yeah, make sure you get the the good draw stroke to where you keep the angle. You'll notice the eight is not available for these lower corner, this lower left corner. So he needs to be able to come down. See? Good shot. And great stroke. He knew not to let up on that one. A lot of people make that mistake. All I got to do is draw over, and they just don't qu quite get the draw on the ball, and they fall a lot more straight in on the six, and then you, you got problems. He got perfect here. He's got an angle with a pretty easy shot getting to the eight. Yeah, he's going to apply a little high right and just come straight down the table in between the 12 and 13, I believe. Oh, wow, he hit it with, uh, like, a lot more high ball rather than trying to make it check up with the English, Danny. I know. <laughs> he got... He got a little tricky shot on D8, too. Yeah, real tricky, especially there's a piece of that 15 he could catch and certainly and scratch. scratch. And maybe off the 15, off the 14 and scratch. Maybe off the 15 catching a hair of the 9 if he hits it with a little more speed. Yeah, he's in a funny spot here. Is he banging this? Maybe it's a good idea. Cut his inside. You could scratch off the 15, yeah, 14. I, st I still like the cut more than the bank, that's for sure. Uh, it went long on him, and that's going to be yeah. That's, that's going to be a problem. Him. Really made a great out to uh, what I think was a mistake on the six. Uh, trying obviously it was a mistake, but really just overhit the ball on this okay. slick on this slick table. When you're trying to apply English to make the ball check up, you got to hit a little slower to let it let it uh, really grab. 
Yeah, let's see if he gets punished for that. I imagine he will. Well, I think Danny's alluding to uh, not only the run out here, but Corey will be breaking in the next game. This is coming off a dry break, so there isn't going to be as much punishment as Jason would like to apply. This oh. guy has great heart. I know that. Guy was on the hill in the U.S. Mm. Open, and he broke and ran six and out on him. Yeah, great players make for great moments and great memories, that's for sure. And there's real history every time we see any of these players playing. a dry break and then uh, a really nice run and a mistake uh, getting position on the eight by Corey. Jason Shaw cuts the cuts the lead to one, but he's going to have to sit in his chair and wait and see what Corey does here at six to five. Huge match for both players. You might consider it, it means more to Jason just, just after losing his first one. Yeah, you can't afford two losses. Yeah, we talked about it mathematically. You're still in it, but uh, you'll need some help, that's for sure, to get to that final. And that final will be 9.30 on Tuesday night. Three and two won't get there. No, you don't think so. I mean. If three and two gets there, there's going to be some ties. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think, uh, I'm not sure. I, I was trying to figure it out last night a little bit, but I think you could have... Uh, well, you could have every, uh, four players with a three and two record. Right. I think you could, so... Kind of like the NFL guys went in the division at eight and eight and seven and nine sometimes. Uh, if I remember correctly, Seattle several years ago beat uh, beat the Saints in the playoff game after winning the division at seven and nine, I think. Uh, Corey watched the cue ball go back through the bottom of the rack. Oh, okay. And he's been getting some nice kisses now. This one's kissed him back to the end rail. But you'll notice a heavy cluster right by the rack, right by the spot. He has no easy shot. Yeah, one thing that uh, has really been a plus for Corey is he's been making one, one stripe, one solid, two stripes, two solid. So that when there's been clusters, when you have a choice uh, on what you have to shoot first, that's a huge, uh, huge break. And now a similar long, it's a much tougher shot, but a similar one ball to this corner that he missed early in the match. We'll see if he's aware of that. Tough shot. Oh, and he hit it the same way Tough again. Tough shot. It looks, he missed it worse this time. Well, it looks to me, now that's three times the, 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 the ball he, the eight ball he shot earlier in the corner he was just standing over and the one he missed now twice. It looks to me he's accidentally hitting the cue ball with a little bit of left English, which is making the cue ball squirt a little to the right and consequently overcutting the ball. Okay, what does Shaw have? Well, Shaw's got a 13 ball. That's not that great. Uh, Tough position shooting he, that. He could shave the 11 and come one rail just to the back of the 12-10 if he just didn't really like his chances of running out. I know that. He's doing that. Yeah, Good that's thinking. okay. He would never do this in the past. Great, he snookered him on everything. Yeah, and, and he's got a little bitty piece of the five, but playing eight ball, you don't have to uh, really wedge the player all the time. If you get the full eclipse with you having all your, you know, you got five, six stripes on the table, well, it's going to be real hard for Corey to, to play safe back on you. Well, he's got a shot at the five. I think Tough he should shoot it. it. He's got he's, to. Yeah, I think he should shoot it. Don't lose the game on a pony safe. He's got to shoot this. It goes. I'm not sure why he's queuing down on the ball, though. Hit great, it great, though. What Look a shot. Uh. That was worthy of applause. Yeah. And now he's looking to see what he can do with that 6-7. 
there's an angle on the three to where he can chip the seven in and uh, chip the three in and go into the six and seven. And that's not available right now, but if he was to knock the one away and maybe get around back table, back down table, is he looking at the seven off the six? Is that what he's looking at now? Another, he might uh, be. Another carom shot? He might be. Now this one just, I can't, we can't see him fully, but this one definitely looks like he has to hit with a high ball, right, Danny? Right. Make the other ball draw. Yeah, if he hits this with a draw again. Oh, well. Wow. Great shot. Yeah. Corey really showing off his years of experience playing this game, I'll tell He's you that. He's a very creative player. Yeah, just a creative mind, period. Okay, what do you do with the six? Well, if you're good now and it banks, I think you got to shoot it because you're going to have easy position that way. You don't want to wait on it and then maybe you're not going to draw. You might draw for where you get the bank, but you don't have easy position. It looks straight in. No yeah, English just don't, hit it. You don't have to kill it, just a medium firm. A lot of people overhit them. If they get to bouncing, you're going to lose your track. Yeah, that's the stroke I like. You want to keep the object ball on the table on these diamond tables and a lot of the new felt table, uh, newer tables, if you get to pounding the ball, it gets in the air a little bit and you lose accuracy. Don't let off the stroke here. Make sure you get by the eight, whether it's out in the center or... Okay. Yeah, he's in good shape here. I thought he had a little more angle to where he had to come across and play the one. Uh, he's going to have to eight. draw the two and play the one in the same pocket. Yeah. He's got Nicely a little, done. Yeah, a little stretch here, so you're probably going to see the bridge, especially with the two balls uh, playing all ball fouls. You don't want to lean over the table with the 10-15 there. If he's straight, too, he may have to uh, screw this one back a little for the oh, eight in the a side, lot, right? a lot, yeah. I don't think he can punch it over to the left side of the eight to where the eight goes in the lower right corner. Oh, he could, oh, okay. it goes in the corner. If he could do that, I like that a lot better than drawing the ball. You're right. This speed is a lot easier. He got pretty good on the eight, too. And, and really just maybe the out of the tournament so far, cutting the five down the rail, playing a billiard on the seven off the six to open the rack, and then really just a clean out after that. Corey is playing very well. Yeah, he definitely looks prepared. And I got the certain things I look at for those for those balls off of other balls like that because, you know, played a lot of one pocket, so shot a lot of those types of shots. I'd sure like to know what goes through Corey's mind to make him feel like it's on or how <laughs> I need to hit it. It has to be on to shoot it. Right, but I'm saying he, I think. But high or low changes the glance. No, of course, but I think he can create from a little better, a little different areas than other people can. I think he's got some kind of knowledge on it. I, I'm not sure what he would charge me for that knowledge, but. But I'd sure like to know, i tell you that. He, uh, mainly, not the, the one this rack, this last rack, but the one a few racks ago that both of us were convinced was going to the low rail. He hit it right in the center of the pocket, the 7 off the 15. So Now a tough Shoot shot on the, the nine. Eyeballs. Yeah, he's only made one, so that's all he can do. Now can he open this? Can he get this ball open? Now is it definitely going in off the 2? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, great shot. The two must have been a little closer to the hole than I thought. I thought it was up just a hair. Yeah, you got to go ahead and drop for these two down here now. Uh, you can't wait on that 15 and 13. Nothing wrong with playing the 11 last. It's so open, and you'll notice there's no traffic coming back down the table for the eight. That's normally when you stay away from that that ball on the other side of the table is whenever you have a lot of traffic trying to get back down for the eight, but you'll notice the center of the table is wide open. Yeah, he's got a perfect angle to go one rail and shoot the eight to where he's leaning. Yeah, he can go two rails as well, just like so. And he doesn't, that's one thing that Jason doesn't mind, a little extra distance. Yeah. Such a pure stroke, straight. Didn't roll off. That's for sure.
good mistakeless match so far. If yeah. there's such a word, is there a mistakeless? Is that a word? Uh, mistake free, maybe? I don't know. No, mistake, you I know mistakeless, mistakeless. mistakeless. Must, I've never, I don't think I've heard it. I, I don't but know. But we know what it means. <laughs> no, I know what it means. I know what you're getting at. And we've had a couple, but I tell you what, they were way early in the match. That's for sure. Uh, Corey missed a one ball and, and Jason missed a nine ball. But other than that, I, way early in the match, and I, I don't see any more open misses. Uh, Interesting enough, this is the only match of the day for both of these uh, both of these guys. We'll see them back tomorrow after this. Uh, but if you're just tuning in, this is the second match of day two. With Filler beating Appleton earlier in the opening match, uh, later at seven, uh, Joshua Filler will face Shane Van Boning, and then at 9:30 we'll have Darren Appleton and Dennis Arcuyo to wrap up day two. So, lots of great pool coming. Now he's getting to that end rail again. It's just going to matter be a matter of which balls he's made on the break. He's made one of each. So <laughs> for being pinned on the middle of the back rail, you can't ask for more than that, right? Making one of each. Right. Now he has his choice. He could bank the six or cut the two in the side. That or he, if if he if he doesn't like the solids, he could go rail first on the twelve, and that's the the stripe uh, the stripes are are pretty doable. You'll I think the solids are a little bit better. With the five and three the way they are, I guess so. What was that? Excuse us one second, ladies and gentlemen. We it appears that everybody is okay. We had a man to fall. A trip, it looks like, and... Uh, and we're going to reset the clock, make sure everything gets settled. I'm actually going to take a timeout, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. And ladies and gentlemen, we're back here with match number two with Corey Duell at the table with an open table leading seven to six. He's playing the bank. Yeah, I can't believe this. I'd much rather go for, oh, okay, he could cut it. Now that makes a lot more sense. And watch out for the cue ball. ball. Oh, okay. boy. Perfect control. Well, he's got a tester on this uh, five ball, I think. Unless he can get at the two. I don't know if he can get at the two or not. The four may, may squeeze in between the uh, two and eight. Yeah, there it is. I think he can make the two. If he can make the two, that's the one he wants to shoot. That's for sure. On the pin side, but you could make it. Well, he's, he's shooting the five. Yeah, he's got to dead roll this in, too. He can't come with much speed and get to this back rail. He's got to dead roll this in to hold position, some kind of position on either the one or the four. Good shot. Yeah, great shot. He'd like to think he could just play the three with no problems, but he doesn't have much of a pocket. So he may wait on that until he can get a little straighter. Well, could have gotten a little closer to that one, though, right, Dan? I think he can go to the three right now if it does pass. You go to the three right now, you get closer. Is he gonna? Does he have to involve the In ten ball? In between the balls. Does he involve the ten? Yeah, That's there we good. go. Still, though, he's gonna. It's a game winner if he makes it. Yeah, but he's gonna contact the thirteen, so he's got to be real clear cut on what he wants to do with the cue ball here: draw off the thirteen or follow off the thirteen. Both are available. The four does pass the eight in the side, and it goes in the upper left-hand corner. So, I like the follow better. You'll notice the right side of the table is completely open. Yeah, it's like so. He did it. And the main thing is stay off the rail to where he can cue the ball to get back to the eight in the same side pocket. No problem. Just draw two rails off the end rail. Right, but I'm saying if he had fallen on that rail, things could be a little different. But he no did, a, did a great job. to draw the ball if you're <laughs> on the rail. Great. Yeah. And really plays uh, plays the game with a, a little protection in mind almost always and uh, 
aggressive at the same time. And with no gambling. Right, fun to watch. And now bringing them to another two game lead. Just joined us. We're racing to 10 here in the eight ball. Later in the week, we'll be having uh, races to 125 points in the straight pool. Nice. Oh. Excuse me, I was corrected on that. It's 150. I, I, someone lied to me about it. Not lie, misinformed. Okay, I see. 150. We're going to see some 100 ball runs. For sure. I think he's made. Uh, Two stripes and one solid, so he's going to have to get at that 14 and then the 15 at some time. The, the other balls look, look fairly routine. don't think the 15 it may pass the three but it's very hard to get position on that so he's coming on down and I don't know about that one I really didn't know about that play tied there up the eight he might have tied up the 15 as well he may have a play on the 15 it's close well then if he has that then the eight's not tied up yeah and really pretty fortunate to open there and get a shot on that 15. Well, if the 15 goes, he can go right to the 14 now. Well, it's close. And our, the thing is, he doesn't want to get pinned uh, to where he can't get position up on that 11 ball. You'll notice the two there. He may have to bank this ball and draw back out of position. Or take a long shot. Yeah, but, yeah, true that. It's a matter of does the eight go by the three? I think it does. Looks to me like he can draw off the two, and then that's going to catch a piece of the eight. Now, where is that going to move the eight to, though? Might be out in the oh, open. Okay, but okay, he's all right. Yeah. I didn't know if he had to draw off the two a little bit to get to that 11. And that. And again, his strong suit, it's a long distance shot, just getting it down. You no notice how he never overhits it, just gets the most out of everything. You know, the cue ball travel off the rail, everything. Oh, did he catch a piece of the three going in? Close. And it, sure, it looked funny going by the three, the eight ball did, but now it went again. Went through the right side of the pocket. Corey doing everything he needs to do when it's his break. Uh, now Jason doing the same thing. Really flawless pull ever since just the first couple games of the match. Mistakeless. Yeah, mistakeless. <laughs> They're not catching any of them chunky, right? They're all hitting them all clean. You know, Corey's already come with two or three trick shots. Uh, I kind of get the feeling uh, if he goes on to win this match, we're going to see another one. Looks like he's plenty prepared to, to do whatever he has to do to get out. Pay attention to that cue ball coming back into the rack. Oh, he made a few. Yeah, he's got to hope, though, because uh, he doesn't have many. Well, he's got the 10 in the corner as well as the 6. Uh, he made two stripes, though. 
Well, so. 10 is not a gimme for sure. Well, he'd like to maybe even peel off the 14 first if he could, and maybe trying to save the 10 to get at the 11 at some time or another. I'm not sure. He's got to look at the 14 right now. He's got to consider that one, right, Danny? Right. Right. I don't think it passes the six in the corner later on, so. No, it goes in the side right now. He's going to have to shoot it. Wow, what a hit. Shooting at that hmm. angle, that speed, tough shot. Is he too thin to cut this 10 in and break these balls? He could certainly it bank it and break the balls. The no, cube. I think he can cut it in. Well, that's what he's got to do. He's going to do that. That way the cue ball has a lot of speed on it, too, when he goes in these balls. He could bank it, but you'll notice that full hit on the 10 is really going to slow the cue ball down. So, I like cutting it. He's close yeah. enough to hit the paint. He's got to watch it, too, though. He may get, if he hits the rail first, this cue ball may come back towards this lower right-hand corner scratch. off the two. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And scratch. Wow. It did. Yeah, well, you know, if he caught rail first underneath the two, the cue ball was coming back towards this lower half of the table. It didn't have to scratch. But uh, I think Corey even knew it was a possibility of losing the rock. And, and what an untimely scratch after a great shot. Not only on the opening 14 ball he made, but the 10 ball as well. You couldn't, you know, you're going to chalk that one up as a mistake. But I I wouldn't, I, I consider that just a bad roll in my book. What do you think, Danny? No, he gambled. And, and when you gamble, bad things can happen. Yeah. And but, that's it. I, I don't want to say it's bad luck. Well, because not, you knew that was there. Well, yeah, but, I mean, he was in a situation. I think gambling was his best decision. So uh, playing well, safe. Well, he thought so, too. Yeah, but playing safe, playing eight ball with just a few of your stripes left on the table and your opponent having six solids, you're going to be up against it. Uh, you're almost going to have to have your opponent fumble, either mentally or physically. So I really think him attacking on that ten ball was the right shot. Right, he didn't have to scratch, but we knew that it was there. Yeah, possibility if he caught the, the rail first underneath the two with that English, it was definitely coming back towards these, this bottom rail. And Jason just, after one mistake early in the match, and he knew he was going to trail, and he knew that it was in Corey's hands whether or not Jason would have a chance to tie this match because of the alternate break format once you get behind. It'll be a race to two. Yeah, and this is a big mistake falling short here. Not right, only is he needs he, the bridge. He's going to be stretched, but he's going to have to wrap this corner fairly tight unless he elects to come with top English to the top half of the table and play the eight in the side, which I think may even be the shot here. Otherwise, he's got to wrap this corner pretty tight here. On yeah, him. I think he can do that, though. Well, he can, but the new felt spreads a little bit, so if he doesn't get quite as much English on it to wrap that corner. Perfect. Oh, he hit it Except thick. Except he missed it. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> that's it. I didn't see that coming. Corey Duell's going to get on the hill first. I didn't see that one coming. I think no one on the... I this. wasn't worried about the position. I saw two rails going to the eight. Yeah, but, but he caught it awfully the ball. thick, though. He, he yeah. is very chunky. Chunky, super chunky. But uh, the cue ball position was much better than because he caught it thick. I think he caught it thick because he had some concern coming out of that corner. He didn't want to get trapped behind that 11. Corey's got options here. He can just hold for the 13. Yeah, 15 to the 8 is be simple. Just a big miss there by Jason Shaw. And Corey, he's been playing steady pool for a long time, and he's had a pretty good, pretty good... Uh, last couple years, but I really think that run at the U.S. Open, I watched him play, played great the entire ma the entire tournament, and you know there's no soft draws in that event. I think it really boosted his confidence coming here uh, for this make it happen. And also playing eight ball and straight pool, which I think are two of his best games. Well, the pile shots come up a lot in both games. You know, the kisses like he's made. 
They come up a lot in eight ball and straight pool. Absolutely. And one pocket, of course. Yeah, but and I'll tell you what, I've, I've, I've said this for years. I played Corey in a lot of one pocket matches as well. I've never had anybody make balls out of the middle of the stack like on me like Corey has. I hate it when he's going to look at one that he thinks is dead, and I have no clue if it's dead or not. Yeah. I'm talking about buried in the pack. I've seen him make a mummy. Oh, the scratch. Uh-oh. Just, That's the end of him. And just back-to-back -back mistakes. That's the end of Shaw. And you'll see the stripes being taken here. Right. He'll try and get at that 15 ball just as quick as he can. He can't He can't shoot it now. They're all clear. Yeah. Definitely got to take got to take the stripes, I think. And, and just like I said, get to that 15 just as quick as you can. Otherwise, there's no problems. So you might see like the 12, 10 roll forward on the 15. He could shoot. He could get on the 13, I think, is a little easier to get on the 15. I like that a little better. Whatever way he does it, it's not going to be tough. No, it's just going to be rolling the ball, most likely. Which is, you know, you make less mistakes doing that. When I say rolling it, I don't mean just dead rolling it. I mean, he's controlling what's going on, but he's hitting, it, hitting the cue ball on the top. These players are so accurate, hitting it all kinds of ways, but really that top English keeps you away from any problems. I'm really he must not have got on that 10 how he wanted because I'm really surprised he's waiting on the 15. And he's going to have to draw his ball here down table. It's going straight at the position. Good shot. He can actually stop his ball there. He doesn't have to flirt with drawing back for an angle. He can stop his ball there and play the 13 in the corner. Which then, is, yeah. yeah. And then fall on the 15. No reason to draw back to a position here. I think that's why you saw him go in and, and, and take the 9 out and those other balls before the 15. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And the 8 passes the 2. Yeah. There's so, not really uh, not really a bad spot for the 15, right? The A goes right. in both corners. Right. And really, uh, again, I, I'd have to say now we've only had two matches on day two, but I still think Corey's played the best pool uh, for sure yesterday in my mind, and now again today so far between the four that have played. Well, can he get off the rail here? Yeah, and he just he just draw back just a, just an inch or two to let the side pocket help him. Yeah. Good shot. Corey Duell moves to 2 and 0. Jason Shaw, quite the opposite at 0 and 2. Uh, both these players are done for, for day two, and they will be back on day three. I'm Jeremy Jones with AccuStats Video Productions, joined here by Danny DiLiberto. I really enjoyed it, Danny. It was great. Great match, a lot of trick Lots, shots. A lot of things to talk about. That's right, and that, that will conclude our afternoon session. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned, though. Later on at 7 o'clock, we'll be back with Joshua Filler playing Shane Van Boney, and then followed by Darren Appleton and Dennis Urcullo. Thanks again for joining us, joining us here at AccuStats. Uh, stay tuned, and we'll be back at 7. Thank you very much.